So in case you missed it, late last night, Paul Reed is returning to the Philadelphia 76ers after the Sixers matched the Utah Jazz's offer. Three years, $23 million for B-Ball Paul. And if you didn't watch that video, make sure you watch it right after this one because, hey, we broke it down here on the channel and that's why you subscribe to the show because when breaking news happens, we cover it here on 76ers Now. Happy Monday. Hope everybody out there had a fantastic weekend. As for what we're getting into on today's show, new information on Paul Reed returning to Philadelphia, and could James Harden also be running it back alongside Joel Embiid? Let's begin here with the latest on B-Ball. Paul, the Sixers matching that three-year, $23 million offer sheet. Because of the conditions in this contract, the final two years of the deal become guaranteed if the Sixers make the second round of the NBA playoffs. Reed can veto any trade for a year, and he is not allowed to be dealt to the Utah Jazz. The back and forth here between Danny Ainge, who's running basketball operations for Utah, and Daryl Morey was a fun subplot to this story, of course, Danny Ainge won those championships with the Celtics, was an executive for the Celtics, and is hated by a lot of Philadelphia fans. And he, of course, doesn't like Sixers fans or the Sixers organization all that much. So there was a little bit of a power struggle, I thought, as a subplot of this story with Paul Reed, Danny Ainge, Daryl Morey going back and forth, and that provided some entertainment value over the weekend. Now with Reed coming back to the Sixers officially, this will be Philadelphia's front court here led by the reigning MVP in Joel Embiid, who we'll talk about here in a moment. Paul Reed, Mo Bamba going to be one of the backup bigs behind Embiid as a guy who can stretch the floor, very good athlete with that 7'10 wingspan. Hopefully he can finally live up to expectations that were thrust upon him coming out of Texas when he was drafted 6th overall by the Orlando Magic. And in a move that didn't make any sense at all, especially with the Sixers bringing back Paul Reed, Montrez Harrell will also be coming back on that one-year deal worth the vet men. Reed's first three years, this has been a story of a player who's steadily been able to develop since getting identified out of DePaul by this organization. And you see the year-by-year -year breakdown here where in year one, he doesn't play that much under Doc Rivers. Year two, plays a little bit more, but still not to the liking of Sixers fans. And then this past year, 69 games played, only 11 minutes per night, but as we came down the stretch in the regular season, he started to earn some more rotation minutes. And I'm high on the signing, and I wanted to see Reed come back because he does have a lot of potential, in my opinion. Now, he's never going to put up the numbers that he put forward at the G League level with the Delaware Bluecoats when he was the league MVP and one of the G League's best players. 24 career games at the G League level, but the statistics here tell a pretty interesting story that I want to discuss. 22 points per game, almost 12 rebounds, almost two steals, and almost two blocks. But Paul Reed at the G League level took and made three-pointers. He knocked down more than 40% of his three-point attempts on about four three-point attempts per night. That has not translated to the NBA level because Paul Reed hasn't taken or made a lot of threes because his role's been a little bit different than it was at the G League level when he was asked to be more of a playmaker and a scorer, but also he didn't really take any threes. Could that change this year under the leadership and the coaching of Nick Nurse? And could Paul Reed maybe play the four? This is a potential six or starting five that might intrigue some if they do run it back. And the big change here, Reed in the starting lineup, as your four, who's athletic, as a rim runner, good on both ends of the floor, gives you that energy, and maybe a little bit more offense as compared to P.J. Tucker, who you take out of that starting five. So you have Harden running the one. Tyrese Maxey can handle some ball handling responsibilities as well. Hopefully Tobias Harris, if he does return, has a much better season in a contract year than what he did last year when he was very disappointing and kind of stood idly in that corner. You have Joel Embiid locking it down as the reigning MVP. And some Sixers fans have asked me, and I've also seen you in the comment section saying, start Paul Reed. And with him signing that three-year, $23 million deal, that means that he might be a starter. Something to keep an eye out here for 
uh, with training camp coming up here in a couple of months as well as the NBA preseason. I want to see what Reed's role is going to be now that he's making more money, and I believe that Nick Nurse can bring the best out of him from a developmental standpoint. So let me open up the floor here. Do you want to see Paul Reed start for the Sixers? Just give me an S for start or B for backup. Which role do you think he fits better at? Why Reed is intriguing and why I wanted to see the Sixers bring him back. Homegrown developmental player. And this is an organization that has missed on a lot of players going into the draft. They finally were able to identify a good one in the pre-draft process, but we've seen the likes of Isaiah Jolie, Charles Bassey, and others. And to see those players walk and then flourish elsewhere has been very, very frustrating because the Sixers as an organization have been cash-strapped. And they're allowing these young, talented, affordable, and cheap players walk go somewhere else where they end up fulfilling some of those expectations. Paul Reed can also rim protect as well as rim run. He's a long athlete who's a very active defender with that wingspan. And those numbers at the G League level, almost two steals, two blocks, goes to show you he has a good awareness on that end of the floor, in my opinion. I think that he can really thrive as a role man, and we've seen that happen at moments in the early portion of his career. And ideally, if he's able to maybe knock down some three-pointers, he becomes more versatile, which gives the Sixers as a team more versatility if he can play the four and the five. James Harden update coming up next. But first, we want to tell you about this deal. Thanks to our friends at Fanatics, the 76ers t-shirt shorts combo. Awesome deal. Was $60 now on sale for just $30. All you have to do, use that link down below, chatsports.com slash 76ers combo. Joel Embiid sang from the Las Vegas Summer League in an interview with Rachel Nichols that he wants James Harden to return to the Sixers in 2023-2024. Here's a direct quote from the reigning MVP. I was disappointed about Harden's trade request. We're going to be boys forever. I want him to come back, obviously, so that we can go out there and accomplish what we want, which is to win a championship. So hopefully his mindset can be changed. And Joel Embiid did also say, I understand it's a business, and I appreciate how Harden has dealt with this situation. Really what this comes down to, you have to appease Joel Embiid. You have to keep the big man happy because so far in his NBA career, he has had to deal with a lot. And if Embiid wants James Harden back, do you have to do what it takes to keep Joel Embiid happy and retain James Harden, who I know he's going to be 34 years old, but is still putting up Really, really good number. Second best career three-point percentage this past year. Career best assist to turnover ratio. He is a walking 20 points per game. He'll give you about 10 plus assists, seven to eight rebounds. Him being a playoff guy who fails to show up in some of these big moments is certainly very, very frustrating. And the numbers certainly do dip when it comes time for the playoffs because the intensity level does get increased a little bit as physicality is on the uptick. And because of that, James Harden does struggle a little bit. But look, at the end of the day, he did run the two-man game at a very, very good level alongside Joel Embiid. He did lead the NBA in assists with almost 11. He did shoot 38.5% from three-point range. Against Boston, he did hit two game winners. He's a three-level scorer, even though his drive to the basket game is starting to dip a little bit, and his finishing ability around the rim isn't what it was. There are concerns. He's going to be 34 years old this year, not always in great shape. So if he pouts, if he wants out, is he just going to tank the season? And in turn, that will cost the Sixers a lot of wins and affect that locker room culture. Harden, for me, always been way too inconsistent. The highs and lows with his game, they're a struggle when you're relying on him to do so much. No championship pedigree, and I think in those championship type of moments, when he doesn't rise up, he never takes accountability for failing to show up. So before we dip on out of here for today's show, might be going live later today on 76ers Now, so stay tuned for that. That's why you subscribe, turn on those notifications. Let's ask you this. Do you want Harden to return to the Sixers? Why for yes and for no, let me know. We're bringing you the latest Sixers news and rumors on today's show, and that's what we always do, so I hope you subscribe.